Welcome back. It's been a while. It's the Ask Dave Anything series. This time we're going to be talking about the game industry. So let's just jump right into it. Question number one. I basically want to break into the game industry. I would love to be able to take two years off and just dive into game development. But bills. What jobs could I apply for in the game industry? So we're talking about entry level game industry jobs. Um, <clears throat> I think the best option for the majority is either a assistant, uh, what is it, associate producer, or a entry level QA job. And sometimes there are internships for positions like these. So those are the, the two basic ones that most people can get into. And all you really have to show for them is that you've had jobs in the past and that you are not a psychopath or slacker. I mean, that's how I broke into the, into the industry myself. I went in through QA. If you have a high end job already, uh, if you have any programming skills, if you can demonstrate that you've created games, there are junior design positions and, and junior programming positions that you should probably apply for. It really just depends on what you've done before, how much work history you have to show, and what sort of skills you can bring to the table. Producer jobs tend to be the ones that have the most transferable managerial type skills. So just depends on your background. Question number two. Hey, would love your thoughts on monetization of video games. Do you think the old ways of a full online and single player experience for a one-time fee like Warcraft 3 and Starcraft 2 is better than free plus cosmetics like League of Legends and PoE? I always wondered if Starcraft 2 would have been much bigger if it was free since it had a bigger player base than LoL initially or if it was simply the game design that made LoL more appealing. It depends on the game. The thing about Warcraft 3 and Starcraft 2 is that it always had a strong single player experience and then a strong multiplayer experience. To support a strong multiplayer experience generally you want to go free to play at some point i think what starcraft 2 eventually did is separate the campaign from the multiplayer and then make the multiplayer free to play and then if you want to play the campaign you got to pay for it a game that is only multiplayer has to be free to play these days overwatch being the rare exception to that and i think it worked for them because they simply provided all the characters and that removed the pay to win aspect which i think is important however depends on how quickly you want to build an audience free to play obviously you're going to get more players in early on if i were making a game right now i prefer the old school style of having a strong single player a strong multiplayer and uh, an editor that people can use to build a game that said that means i would have to get investments uh, either i would have to kickstart it and crowdfund it or i would have to get venture capitalists to to pay for it and if venture capitalists come into the picture then i have all sorts of issues to deal with all right question number three would love to hear how you go about becoming a game designer, specifically for Germany and indie, if possible, but also in general. Do you have to go and study it? Can you just apply for a job? Well, if you're indie, you're not applying for any jobs. You're, you're just making a game on your own. There are schools that promise to give you a game design degree, but I don't think that they're very good. Generally, they end up being programming rather than actual game design. I think the best way to learn game design is to just try and make your own games. And I would start with board games because you can just do that with uh, paper and, and, you know, cardboard cutouts and stuff. Start making games, keep making games, and eventually you're going to have enough skills to be a good game designer. When you play games, you have to study what's good about the game, why you like the game, how, and break down how the systems of the game work. When you build up a library of knowledge of all those gameplay systems, then naturally over time you will have this backlog in your brain of all these game design elements that you can bring into a new game that you're designing. Because, I mean, the best way to learn is by doing. Question number four. How stressful was your job working for game companies? <laughs> Depends on the game company. Some game companies were far more stressful than others. Uh, Blizzard was extremely stressful, for example. Pretty toxic environment. There was a lot of overtime involved. It was not the best experience. It did teach me a lot. It also didn't teach me as much as I might have learned if I went to another studio. Each game studio has their own way of doing things. You'll learn one methodology for making a game, one way of designing things, especially if you're under one boss and, it, and that's like for five years. If you're working on one product for three to five years, you're not learning as much as you would if you made one product in one or two years and then moved on to another project and made a product in one or two years. In terms of stress, you know, I went gray pretty early. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it's necessarily because of uh, working in the game industry, but certainly those first uh, five years were pretty brutal. And there's also a lot of unnecessary infighting, uh, especially in the area of game design, where people think that, oh, it's just about having ideas and there's these clash of ideas and whichever idea comes out ahead, 
<laughs> is the one that should win. And you know, that's that's really not what game design is about. Yeah, it's rough. Uh, what are the skills, programming or other skills you needed to work for a company like Blizzard? Uh, in terms of what I needed, I started there because I knew Macintosh computers and they needed testers for Macintosh versions of Diablo and Starcraft. Eventually I developed a whole new set of skills because I learned Star Edit. It's sort of like basic programming. There's like logic in the triggers and, and things like that. Every company is different. So that's that's the important thing. And so when you apply to these companies, you just need to read the job description and see what skills they want you to have. Like if you really want to work at Bungie or you really want to work at Blizzard, then go look at the job descriptions for the type of job that you want to do and then read the requirements of skills for uh, that particular job title and acquire those skills. Question number six. This is a, basically an addendum to the previous one. What do you think are the key skills a person needs to have to work for a gaming company? For example, if someone will design quests for WoW versus creating a campaign story for Warcraft. Creating a whole campaign requires you to have a lot of storytelling skills and narrative design skills. So you have to understand how a story structure works in terms of like a long story that requires a lot of combat would be to basically have a background in literature and have a lot of things that you can draw from for, for that story. In terms of like quest design for WoW, these are much shorter. Do a lot of writing, do a lot of creative writing, study literature, especially the class a question number seven. Hey Dave, game community manager here looking to put some of my extensive gaming knowledge to use and perhaps starting a career in game design. Love your classes, they are very helpful, but I still don't know how I could join other projects and start as a junior game designer or an internship if I have to sustain myself in the meantime. So far I haven't been able to make a bridge between being CM of a game and, and starting to participate actively as part of the game design. Do you have any tips for people that want to change careers within the game industry? So if you're changing careers within the game industry, all you have to do is demonstrate that you can do it. Let's say that you are a producer and you want to go into design. Since you're on the project already, you already have access to the tools for the for the game. Make something and show it to them and go, hey, what do you think about this? Like if someone if someone makes a level, there's like a little dead space over here. Create something for that dead space and go, hey, what do you think if this was like an offshoot on your level? And eventually you're just doing the job of, of like a level designer. For me, I sort of see that there's like this journey to game design. So if you start in quality assurance, you're testing the game and you're seeing what works and what doesn't all the time and you sort of build up the store of knowledge of like oh, these things work these things don't if you do this you need the player to be more aware of this thing over here because those become little bugs that that can improve the user experience and eventually you've got this big store of knowledge that uh, you can use when you're doing level designs so next you move into level design you start using the editor and creating your own little areas and like, oh, I want to have a mission where this happens and so forth. And as you do that, you'll create better and better experiences. And then you're like, that's when your mind will start going, oh, if I had this gameplay system, this would be really interesting here. And in some editors, you can even make your own gameplay systems. And that's when you graduate into basically general game design. As you're doing game design, you're like, oh, this system only works with this sort of economy. And so you end up in system design and economy design and, and so forth. If it were up to me, every game designer's career would start in quality assurance, where you're like experiencing what an end product created by someone who's a professional and learning from that. And when you know how to improve on something and a professional has done, you sort of graduate into, well, now maybe I can do it myself. Question number eight. Are you disappointed with the AAA game industry nowadays with the time pressure, stress crunch, buggy launches and patches, awful monetization, etc.? Are you more excited to work with startups and indies? <sighs> yeah, I'm pretty disappointed with what the AAA game industry has become. It used to be about making a very finalized product. I would say the only studios that really do that anymore are basically Nintendo and Sony, I suppose. And that's because you don't want zero day patches on console games. I have been disappointed, especially with the, the really gross monetization systems I've seen. The, the pay to win is becoming more prolific. It's it's very frustrating. Typically, I am more excited to work with startups and indies. Right now, the NFT gaming thing is starting up and there's a lot of opportunities there that I'm, I'm going towards, though that can be frustrating for different reasons, which is that the, mainly they're inexperienced with what uh, game design is in general and they're rushing. They think they think you can make a game in like one, two, three months. It's, it's been disappointing to watch where the AAA game industry has gone and, and the way that they've approached games. And uh, if you haven't seen it, I, I suggest looking at my, I think it's the 2019 State of the Game Industry, where I, I basically break down how games used to be more of an art form and now it's more games as a service. Um, so, meh. Question number nine. I have a BA in history. I would like to find an entry-level position in gaming that is not programming. 
what would my options be? Since you already have a BA in history, and if you are a history buff and you really love history, that's the way that I would pitch myself to any game studio is I would come in and say, you know, if you want to have someone on the writing staff who's a buff in history, then you know, I'm your guy. Be a consultant um, and consult with studios about history. Your jobs will be less and your consultancy will be for short periods of time, but you'll get to see a lot of games that way. And while you're in the studio, you'll probably have other opportunities to see how they do things and what sort of position you would be more interested in at that studio. So again, a reiteration of the point, use what you have in your background as a sort of wedge to get in and uh, help with whatever those studios need. So yeah, I would go talk to the Total War guys, for example, if I had to be in history. Question 10. In the industry for hiring in either game creation, animation, or voice work, is experience performing the tasks they will do more important, or is a degree from university or certification that draws the eyes? In general, and for me personally, I give zero craps about a university degree or any sort of certification. Those are meaningless because they're literally just paperwork <laughs> most of the time. I want to see things that you've produced that I can play or watch or here that allows me to sort of judge your skills and see if that's something that we want in our game studio. When uh, when I'm doing hiring for game design, I wanna see game designs they've created, documentation for those things. Those are the things that I will need them to be good at. So yeah, I, I think in general, people want, are more interested in the things you've created. Having a bachelor's degree doesn't hurt, but it's just something that you would put on the resume and it would be like a check mark. But it's more important to have your stuff out there, have that portfolio of work created and on a website that's easy to access and very easy to start seeing those things that you've done, especially the best ones, that's, that's probably how you're going to get the job. Thank you.